everybody, this is Mrs. Mullins, second grade at Leesburg Elementary, coming for bedtime stories. And this evening we're going to read The Christmas Lizard. And this story is by Corey Edwards. So here we go. Oh, glasses first. Gotta be able to see. All right. My face to turn. All right, it says Charlie loved all kinds of pets, from shaggy dogs to sleepy cats. What should he get? A slippery fish or spotted frog? A parakeet or pollywog? No, Charlie wanted something different for Christmas. A lizard, what a Christmas present. A squiggly, scaly, green iguana. Charlie fed him lettuce, broccoli, and strawberries and named him Oscar. A year flew by quickly. Oscar learned how to be how to climb in his cage and flick his tongue at bugs. He could even snap his tail like a whip. As winter winter winds rattled the window, wi oh boy, as winter winds rattled the windows, Oscar noticed a change around the house. Charlie and his mom and dad sang songs. They hung red and green decorations all around the house, even on his cage. What's going on? Oscar wondered. I wish I could find out. Then one night, after long after everyone had gone to sleep, something happened as Oscar paced in his cage. He just couldn't stay put any longer. With a snap of his tail, he popped open the door. He was free, and with no one steering, it was a perfect time to explore. Oscar tiptoed across the living room carpet and spied some fuzzy stockings above him. Socks on the fireplace, said Oscar aloud. Has the whole family gone crazy? Then around the corner, he spotted something strange and wondrous. What do you think he's gonna find? Let's find out. A tree, and not just any tree, with a glittering display, the tree branches sparkled with colored glass bulbs, bright decorations, and tiny lights. How on earth did a tree grow in the living room? The tree stretched all the way to the ceiling. Could he climb all the way to the top? He had to find out. On tiptoe, he finally reached the bottom branches. So up he went, up and up, around and around, higher and higher, and around and around. Soon it seemed as if Oscar wasn't in the tree at all, but in a dark and winding forest. Then around the next turn, he discovered he was not alone. Who is he gonna find? Who found him? Ha, said a guff, gruff voice. It was the Nutcracker, one of the largest ornaments on the tree. He wore his giant jagged beard with pride and spoke in a Russian accent. Who goes climbing in the th at this hour? I'm sorry, said Oscar. I didn't know this tree was yours. It isn't, young comrade, the Nutcracker chuckled. A Christmas tree is for everyone. Christmas? Oscar's eyes widened. I've heard of that, but what is it? The Nutcracker laughed. <laughs> Why, it's the biggest celebration of the year. There are always parties and music and lots and lots of food. A party? For what? Oscar asked. For goodwill, peace on earth, that sort of thing. I'll show you. With a clap of his hands, ten sugar plum fairies danced down through the branches, twirling their like ballerinas. They shook jingle bells and skipped merrily around the Nutcracker and Oscar. One of them carried mistletoe. She dangled it over Oscar's head and kissed him on the cheek. Blah, said Oscar. Giggling, they danced out of sight. So that's what Christmas is, asked Oscar. Pretty much, comrade, said the Nutcracker. And you'd, be, you'd best be careful if you'd climb any higher. A Christmas tree is full of surprises. I will, said Oscar as he waved goodbye with his tail and continued his journey up and up, around and around. The higher he climbed, the sweeter the sound of the tinkling bells. He brushed by candy canes and silvery tinsel. I wonder what he's gonna find now. And 
twinkling lights. It was like another world. Yikes! A monster, Oscar yelled. Who was that lizard with the huge head? But it was just his own reflection gazing back from a great glass bulb. Two voices giggled from behind him. Look at the alligator, one of them said, slapping his knee. He almost jumped out of his skin. Oscar swirled around and to stare at a peculiar ornament, laughing at him. Two little men in brightly colored clothes, one hanging by his coat and the other by his pointy hat. For your information, I'm not an alligator. I'm an iguana, he told them. Well, iguana, wish you a Merry Christmas. They exploded in laughter. Oscar perked up. So you know about Christmas too? Of course we do, one of them said. We're elves. I'm Tink and this is Benny. We work for the fat man. Oscar wrinkled his forehead in confusion. The fat man? Yeah, said Benny. The jolly jelly belly. The big cheese. The red suit wonder. I've heard of him, Oscar said. Is he the reason for the season? Tink grinned. He's Mr. Christmas, Santa Claus. He gives toys and candy to all the kids in the whole world, said Benny. Tink chimed in, and he knows who's naughty and nice. And he flies a red sleigh pulled by reindeer and slides down a chimney with a big sack of toys. Have you ever heard any of this, buddy? No, said Oscar, shaking his scaly head. So Christmas is a day to have parties and get toys? You got it, said Tink. It's all about toys. Why do you think people get so happy at Christmas? It's because it's because of all the free stuff. Oscar wasn't too sure about this or about these elves either, but he politely thanked them and continued on his way. Up and up, around and around, through the next row of branches, he could see an odd-shaped ornament made of felt and glitter and popsicle sticks. It looked old. Across the front was written 1964. Hello, said Oscar. Hello, replied the shy ornament sweetly. Are you lost? Can I help you? Maybe. Say, you don't look like the other ornaments on the tree, observed Oscar. I'm a keepsake, she said proudly. I was made with love and care by Charlie's father when he was a little boy. See? Wow, you are old, said Oscar. You must be wise. Can you tell me what Christmas is all about? The keepsake smiled. Christmas is about families and people helping other people. They give food and to needy children. They take blankets and clothes to homeless people and they donate money to churches. Oscar was really dizzy now, but I thought everybody had parties and got free toys at Christmas. Oh no, keepsake, keepsake replied. Christmas is a time for being with your family and helping others. I've been around for many years and I've seen the joy that it brings. That's strange, Oscar thought. Imagine people who would help others only at Christmas. Why not all the time? But he kept it to himself and he waved goodbye with his tail. Be careful, keepsake called after him. You're very near the top. Oh no, I wonder what he's gonna find at the top. So up. And up and around and around he went. I wonder what lucky ornament sits way up there, Oscar thought. Oscar peered down through the branches. It was like sitting on the mountaintop. For the first time, Oscar could see almost the entire house. The living room, the kitchen, the playroom, and his cage in the corner. It looked so small. And at the very tip top, Oscar met the most important ornament of all. A beautiful angel. Her porcelain face glowed and her smile was so bright it almost blinded him. Wow, Oscar said suddenly timid. You're the prettiest thing I've ever seen. No wonder they put you on top. I'm an angel, she said, a messenger of God. Angels brought the good news to everyone on the first Christmas. Oscar's face lit up with excitement. 
You mean, you know the real reason for Christmas? The angel smiled. It's all about a baby. Now Oscar was so confused that his scaly little head hurt. The Nutcracker said Christmas is for parties, he said, for eating and singing and dancing. Benny and Tink told me it's for getting toys from Santa Claus. And the keepsake told me it's all about families and helping needy and poor. Now you tell me it's about a baby. How can Christmas be all of those things? Those things help us celebrate, said the angel, angel but they aren't the reason for Christmas. The reason isn't even here on this tree. Look over there. The angel pointed across the living room to a tiny barn set high on the mantel above the fireplace. Oscar never would have seen it if he hadn't climbed up so high. Instead, the barn, inside the barn were three were tiny figures of people and animals. And in the center of them all was a baby. God sent his son from heaven for all of us. The baby's name is Jesus, and he was born in a stable like that one long ago. Jesus is the reason for Christmas, Oscar. It's his birthday. A birthday for baby Jesus, Oscar exclaimed. That's why we sing and eat and give toys and presents and help each other. That's right, the angel said, smiling. And the best way to celebrate Christmas is by remembering Jesus and loving others the way he loves you. Say, my birthday is around Christmas time, said Oscar. I guess that makes me a Christmas lizard. That it does, agreed the angel. So she tied a red ribbon around his neck as a gift. Now it's time for you to go back home, she said. Oscar looked down and gulped. Oh, I don't know. Don't worry, Oscar, the angel said. I'll help you. She hugged Oscar tightly and spread her wings. Lifting off the treetop, they glided through the air. Down they flew past all of Oscar's new friends. The Nutcracker gave a snappy salute. Keepsake waved goodbye, and the elves bounced on branches as they cheered for the flight. They flew past the tiny manger scene and the smiling baby inside. Christmas, what a wonderful time, and filled with so many wonderful things. They touched down gently. Oscar thanked the angel as he slipped inside his cage and she flew back on the top of the tree. Snuggled safe in his own bed again, Oscar yawned. Won't Charlie be surprised when he sees my new collar? Before the Christmas lizard drifted off to sleep in the moonlight glow, he looked toward the fireplace and he whispered, happy birthday, baby Jesus. Merry Christmas and good night. The end.